Our topic today is money laundry. You know, a lot of people have been, you know, ignoring the importance or the efficacy of money laundry, uh, you know, uh, fight as regards how to tackle organized and transnational crime. When you ask a lot of people, you know, uh, the solutions to organize and transnational crime, you know, early you can find people that will mention, uh, you know, money laundry as a way of fighting terrorism. And that is why, you know, we want to teach our students who are studying, you know, um, bank frauds prevention and detection about this particular topic. You know, it is very important that you, every one of you are knowledgeable about money laundry and it will go a long way in this your career path now let's talk about what do we mean by money laundry what is money laundry we say money laundry is a processing you know money laundry is a processing of criminal proceeds to disguise its illegal origin you know, processing of criminal proceeds, you know, to disguise the illegal origin. The point here is that, you know, criminals, the money made from the uh, criminals, uh, the money made from the criminal arts, you know, will be injected to the financial system and bring it back to make it illegitimate, you know, just to disguise the illegal uh illegal fund and make it a legitimate fund that is converting it to legitimate fund through one business or the other that is exactly what money laundry is and let me tell you why it's important if you can stop criminals of having access to their proceeds or to the profit of their crime then you have in fact, you have hit them where it pains them most. You have hit the criminals where, where, ex, where it pains them most. And if we must stop crime and criminality in our society, we must talk about how to you know, uh, stop money laundry or how to stop terrorism financing. You know the sponsors of terrorists or terror uh, terrorist groups you know if you can stop their source then you are winning the war the only way to win the war is to stop the war from its source and where it's uh, where is the source the financing the financing is the source of terrorism and the source of organized crime and that is why in this particular class let us consider a lesson point a lesson point today we are going to be looking at ways to handle money laundry ways to handle money laundry now let's talk about um let's talk about our objective our objective is at the end of this class my students should be able to you know understand the some of the implications of money laundry particularly to our national security now you're welcome to my class let's go straight again how does money laundry works you may want to know you know money laundry works in three stages one two three in three stages uh, number one stage the first stage is initial or placement stage then the second stage is layering stage and the third and the final stage is integration stage now what do we mean by layering or, or what do we mean by initial or placement stage this is a stage where the launderer or the criminals introduces the proceeds or the profit of the uh, uh, of their crime into a financial institution 
the money gets into the uh, financial institution, you know, uh, and at this stage, they do all everything possible to get the money into financial institution by breaking it down, you know, the, by making those funds less conspicuous, you know, some amount. They break it down. For instance, you know, there's some certain amount of money that you can deposit. So they know they make sure that they will not exceed that particular amount for a day. So they will do that until all the proceed of the money uh, or the proceed of the crime is, you know, has, has, has been placed in financial institution. Then the second stage, which is very interesting stage again, is layering stage. Layering stage is about the movement of the fund now. The fund will be spread, will be moved across, you know, various bank accounts, you know, various banks, various, you know, across the globe. For instance, you know, uh, this is the time that they will transfer the money from one account to the other. The essence is just to disguise this, the process of the money so that you know, they will not be able to trace this money. Imagine you have some certain amount of money in one account, so that can be easily traced. Uh, but when they uh, when they layer the, the, the phone, when they lay the phone across several different accounts, it will be difficult to trace such transaction as time goes on. Then uh, let's talk about the the third and the final stage of money laundry which is what we call integration integration this is a time that the money that has been uh layered you know we now we will be transferred back to several businesses will be invested this money will be invested in either real estate lottery or luxury cars, businesses, shares, instruments, uh, financial instruments, or negotiable instrument, whatever instrument, you know, they, 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 they invest this money into other legitimate business and bring it back to legitimate economy. The money will come back to the economy as a legitimate uh, fund. So that is the danger of money laundry and we must tackle money laundry head on. Now you may want to ask, where does money laundry occur? Money laundry occur or can take, uh, money laundry can take place in any part of the world, but particularly money laundry or money launderer prefer a weak system a country with a weak system particularly a country with a weak or ineffective money anti-money laundry programs you know if they discover that that country you know um anti-money laundry programs are weak then they will capitalize on such country or they will prefer to operate their criminal uh criminal uh, business or criminal acts in such environments so where money laundry occurs it occurs mostly in a system where the the anti-money laundry programs are not effective or strong it affects business now the effects or the damaging effect of money laundry has a serious implication on the financial intermediaries, regulators, uh, regulatory authorities, and ordinary customers. You know, like you know, you know, uh, men, the reputation of financial institution is high. You know, people trust financial institution because of, you know, high legal uh, standards or professional and ethical standards that the financial institutions you know possessed so 
when you have illegal transactions, if the bank can compromise and you know get the illegal proceeds or criminal proceeds or profits to this financial system, this will have a serious uh, serious test on their integrity and reputation. Their reputation may go uh, down. So this will definitely affect the trust that the ordinary customers have for the financial institutions and the rest. So these are uh, uh, a serious that the money laundry has a serious effect on the business. What is the connection of money laundry with the society? Organized crime can infiltrate the financial institution if left unchecked because large money, you know, or large proceeds, you know, made from organized criminal activities can, you know, be you know transfer back to the economy and this will take a large portion of the economy of the society and that the, down the line this we as a serious negative impact on the social fabrics and the moral ethics of the society so uh, they can use this money to bribe people and the rest How does fighting money laundry help in fighting crime? Like we said, money laundry investigation is one of the frequent ways, you know, to locate the stolen funds and restore it back to the owner. And why is very effective is that you know, financial institutions or designated non-financial institutions, you know, are, you know, operate what we call Operation Know Your Customer, that is KYC, Operation Know Your Customer. And this will give them a valid information about their customers. And one of the ways to locate people easily or one of the ways to get information about people easily through a uh, financial institution or designated non-financial institution i think to fight crime or to fight terrorism to fight organized and transnational crime we must also work the the uh law enforcement agencies or agencies that are designated to fight money laundry particularly in africa in nigeria efcc or school you know uh that is special unit on money laundry uh you know must work hand in hand with financial institution and designated non-financial institution that we go a long way in fight against terrorism and fight against transnational and organized crime. What should individual governments be doing about money laundry? Let me let you know that money laundry is a global crime. It's not restricted to jurisdiction alone. It is a transnational crime and Individual governments should strengthen their anti-money laundry regime or programs or policies. You know, institutions who are in charge should be, you know, uh, head responsible, should be head accountable. Institutions in charge of fighting against uh, money laundry. And let me let you know that it is not only one uh one agency's job it is a collaborative effort and there must be synergy between agencies responsible directly you know to fight against money laundry and that we go a long way and i will also advise government to also encourage researchers criminologists you know to help sensitize you know people about 
money laundry a lot of people let me just cite an example like in money money laundry acts of nigeria that is money laundry acts 2000 uh, 2011 you know a subsection one stipulated that uh, you know there are some certain amount of cash that individual can receive or corporate bodies can receive for instance Individual can only receive five million naira. Why corporate bodies can only receive cash of ten million naira? 